going to talk about divorce and we're going to talk about how divorce affects the Christian woman because I have many women that are reaching out to me on DMs that are going through the process of divorce, that are thinking about divorce, that are actually wanting to go through divorce, but they're being held back and they don't know what to do. And the Christian community doesn't help. And I'm going to say why it doesn't help further on in this video. But if you're watching this video, I want you to go subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, I want you to like it, to share it, and definitely interact with it and leave a comment because divorce is something that is seriously affecting the Christian families. And divorce is something that church, when it talks about divorce, it is unfortunately in a negative aspect. So divorce is kind of like that word that you grew up with, like shh, nobody talks about it. Let's just sweep it under the rug and act like it didn't happen, right? So if any of this sounds familiar to you, if any of this intrigues you and you want to know more, let's go into this. So I'm going to be sharing from my experience. I am recently a divorced Christian woman. Now, I've been saved for more than 30 years. I love the Lord with all my heart. I want to serve God till this very day. I want to serve God. But the fact that I've gone through divorce there is, like they say, the elephant in the room. Everybody sees it, everybody knows it, but nobody talks about it. And that is how divorce affects women, Christian women. Divorce affects all women, but I'm talking to the Christian woman in this video. Because as a Christian woman, you feel like a responsibility to hold your marriage together. You feel the responsibility to keep things in order. You feel the responsibility to keep your children's future healthy. So therefore you stay in a marriage that in reality is falling apart and you're trying to keep it together and you're trying to hold it together and you're telling yourself it's gonna be okay and you're telling yourself that things are gonna work out and you're telling yourself that you're gonna be okay. All you have to do is pray more about it. All you have to do is fast. All you have to do is go to church. All you have to do is be a good testimony. All you have to do is keep believing and your marriage is going to be okay. Does that sound like you? It definitely sounded like me for years, over 15 years, trying to keep my marriage together until I realized one thing. And when I realized this one thing, all the guilt and all the shame was lifted. And that one thing is this, that salvation is personal. Salvation is personal. I have to choose to serve Christ for me and he has to choose to serve Christ for him. And somewhere along the line, he stopped making that choice every day while I continued to make that choice. And because I continued to make the choice to serve God, I continued to hold on to my marriage. But what was happening was that I, as a Christian woman, as a daughter of God, I was being torn into pieces, emotionally speaking. My mind was overwhelmed with the stress of when he was going to do it again. I was married, but I was alone. I was married, but I was raising my boys pretty much alone. No, he was present. He was in the home physically, but emotionally and mentally, he was elsewhere. The attention, the interacting with one another, little by little drifted away. Now, was I supposed to hold on to this for 10, 20, 30 more years? Maybe you have. Maybe you've held on to it. And if you can hold on and embrace 10, 20, 30 years of the same misery that you are in, then that's your choice. I'm talking about me. And I want to talk about me because I know that there's Christian women that are in marriages that are not godly, that God never intended for them to be in and they're holding on, but this is what's happening. That marriage is literally killing them spiritually. That marriage is killing them spiritually. And this is what I mean. 
because the individual, the spouse, has chosen to refuse to surrender to God and to refuse to surrender to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The wife then takes the place of God and wants to force this salvation, wants to force the, the spiritual life on her spouse. And she's praying and she's fasting, but the spouse is rejecting. And this is what's happening. The enemy's coming and telling the wife, you're not praying hard enough. Your prayers are not powerful enough. God is not hearing you. You will have to sacrifice more for your spouse. And I'm here to tell you incorrect. You do not have to sacrifice more for a spouse that is literally actively rejecting salvation. I'm not talking about a spouse who's trying and who comes to the feet of God and is constantly trying to get right with God. To begin with, that's a whole nother subject. That is a whole nother subject. A spouse shouldn't have to try to get right with God for a lengthy time. Again, that's a whole nother video. This video is for that woman whose spouse is constantly living a life that does not please God. And they're living it actively. They're living it out in the open. They're living it knowing the truth, but yet rejecting the truth. And this is the lie that most women feel in bondage. I and responsible to keep my marriage. You're not. You're responsible to keep your salvation, your personal salvation. And you're responsible to keep seeking God so that you can continue to grow mentally, emotionally, physically, and above all spiritually. You are not responsible for his salvation. You are not responsible for his spiritual well being. That is his responsibility. And that's the problem with the Christian community. Women are carrying the load. Women are carrying the responsibility that men should carry. Men should be the high priest of the house. Men should be the ones that are leading their families to God and to, the God, and to God's presence. However, men, unfortunately too many men have a free pass and they get to screw up as much as they want. And the woman keeps doing what is right. You're honest with yourself. You know that it has been a burden and it is eating you up inside because he's not getting it right. Not because he can't, because he chooses not to. And this is where scripture comes in. The Bible says in the time of Paul, marriages, people were being transformed, people were coming to Christ. And Paul began to see that there was an issue between marriages and non-marriages. And this is what he tells the marriage, the marriage couple. This is what he tells the married people, the ones that came to Christ as a married couple. They came to Christ as a married couple. And he says, if your spouse choose, if, and this is what he says, if your unbelieving spouse chooses to be with you, then stay with them. Because by your testimony, they may be saved. But if your unbelieving spouse chooses to walk away, chooses to leave, then let them go. Because, here it is, God has called you to live in peace. God has called you to live in peace. God is a God of peace, not turmoil, nor chaos, nor mental breakdown, nor stress, nor crying at night by yourself when everyone's asleep, not trying to figure out the solution to how this is falling apart. That's not the God that we serve. Unfortunately, too many Christian women are experiencing that type of lifestyle. The God that we serve is a God of peace. In marriage, in our household, in our family, and with ourselves. Peace. As women, as Christian women, if your spouse is walking away from God and is walking away from you, adultery, cheating, and all other things that is, that is causing him to abandon you as a wife and abandon you as a family, the Bible tells you, let him go. Now, do I believe in divorce? No, I didn't believe in divorce. 
I believed that a family and a marriage was forever. But I came to realize that that only works when two spouses are aligned with God. Then it will work. They will both be able to walk in honoring God. But when one spouse is pulling one way and the other spouse is pulling the other direction, there's a constant tearing apart of that marriage. And with the years and, the, and throughout the years, that marriage is falling apart. But the sad part is that most of the time in these Christian marriages, it's the woman that is ending up in pieces, discouraged and completely left alone and God didn't intend it to be that way. God intended for the marriage to come together and to honor God, to serve God, to both surrender to God individually so that they can both surrender and submit to each other as a marriage, to love each other, to respect each other, for the husband to lead and the wife to follow, for the wife to be a helpmate and the husband to be a, a high priest to lead. So when they say God hates divorce, God hates divorce. God hates divorce. But what he hates most is the hardening of hearts of his people. Because God comes tapping at your heart, knocking at the door of your heart for you to open up and let him in but you keep putting the lock and saying, stay out, I got this. And you will only understand the leading of the Holy Spirit when you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. And that comes through prayer, through an intimate relationship with Christ. I know that you're holding it together. I know that you're trying everything you can, but you gotta understand what God called you to live is a life in abundance, a life of peace, not a life of misery and adultery and abuse. That's not what God called you to live. So yes, God hates divorce. It's the hardness of hearts most, and he hates the unfaithfulness of individuals more. I've been thinking about divorce. I want you to reach out to Faith Therapy not to encourage you to get a divorce, but to give you a sound biblical direction of where you stand. Because there is a moment in time where walking away is the only thing that's going to save you. When walking away is the only thing that's going to be able to give you the life that God intended for you to have. Marriage is a God-given thing ordained by God, created by God to honor God. Is your marriage honoring God? If you answered no, connect with Faith Therapy. I wanna walk you through biblical principles of what you can do so that you can either restore your marriage or that you can have the courage to know it's time to walk away because God has called you to live in peace. Something to think about.